This video covers the technical aspects of the TIAC all-in-one stereo systems, including the LP-R450, R500, R550 USB, and R660 USB. Most of this video may also apply to other similar TIAC systems, including the LP-R400, MC-D800, and LP-P1000. For a more general review of these systems, see the video on my main YouTube channel, which will be linked in the description. In some parts of this video, you may see me use one of these Exubi so-called premium diamond stylus, including this one I painted silver to make it look fancier. But I would not recommend using one of these. This would only be an upgrade if you have something like a Crosley that came with one of those cheap knockoff Chinese styli on it because they don't use very good quality diamond in these styluses and in this case a poor quality diamond stylus is actually gonna sound worse and be harder on your records than a good quality sapphire stylus and besides with these Exubi styli you're paying 20 bucks for a pack of three when they're really the same thing as the ones you can get for a little over a buck each shipped directly to you from China on eBay. Only difference is they paint them gold and put them in a fancy package. So if you want to upgrade to a diamond stylus, don't get one of these. Instead get one of these. I don't have the packaging for it, but this is a Fan Steel 793-D7M. These cost about seven or eight bucks on eBay. And these use a good quality diamond stylus much better than these cheapo ones. And for an even greater sound quality improvement, you can get the LP Gear Serapreme Blue Stylus. It's the highest quality stylus available for these ceramic cartridges. Now normally for something like a Crosley, I would not recommend this because you'll never be able to hear the improvement with those tiny little speakers. But for this system, it definitely is worth it if you want the best sound quality. As for the tracking force, it's 5.2 grams, which is within the recommended range for the cartridge and stylus. It's recommended at 5 grams, so this is very close. And as I mentioned, this is a counterweighted tone arm, so it's okay to put the scale on top of the platter. It does not affect the reading. And as I explained in my video about the Crosley Cruiser, stereo LP records were originally designed for a tracking force of 6 grams. So a turntable like this that's tracking at around 5 grams will not ruin your records. Yes, a lighter tracking force will make your records last longer, but the difference is not nearly as great as you may be led to believe. Unless you're playing your records over and over again hundreds of times, you probably won't notice the difference. And it's far more important for your record's longevity to take care of them properly, to keep them clean, to handle them properly, to store them properly, and of course to replace your stylus before it gets worn out. As for the tone arm alignment, I don't know how it looks on camera, but to my eyes that looks pretty much dead on at this point at the outer edge of the record. And there it is at the inner alignment point on this bare walled arc protractor. I added this rubber platter mat, it doesn't come with one. It's a plastic platter under there. The platter comes with these four rubber bumpers, which is what your record actually rests on. So it's not going to be scratched by the plastic. It's actually resting on rubber, even if you don't have a platter mat. But obviously I think it's much better to have a complete rubber platter mat underneath your record instead of just these little things. And you can just pull these out very easily. I got the platter mat on eBay, and unfortunately the seller only had one. However, this appears to be identical to the platter mat that Tiek included on the LP-P1000 system. So you should be able to order this directly from TIAC as a spare part. However, my attempt to ask them the part number and price of this was unsuccessful. They said they would get back to me in a couple days, but they never did. You can use a standard platter mat, however it'll hang off the edge a little bit because the TX platter is a little bit smaller 
than the typical size. This is a standard platter mat from one of my old turntables. It's 11 inches in diameter, while this one is 10 and a quarter inches in diameter. Of course, you could just take one of these slightly larger ones and just cut it down to size, and then it would fit just fine. One of the common complaints with these TX systems is that the turntable tends to play a little bit too fast. And there is a way to adjust the speed. It does not require any special tools, although it does take a little bit of dexterity. The only tool you'll need is a small flat blade jeweler screwdriver like this. Also, you should uh, put your stylus guard in place and lock the tone arm down. Now, you do not need to remove the bladder or the belt. To remove this whole mechanism, you can get it most of the way out just by pulling up on it. You pull up on the tone arm part of it first, and then you can pull up on this side. It sort of hooks on. And then you can tilt it up, but you can't take it out all the way because there's a clip holding it in place, which you have to release. While holding up the mechanism, you can reach in here, you can see this clip, you'll need to flip it vertical, like that. And now, if you pull up on the entire thing, you can take it out. Now here's the entire turntable mechanism flipped up, and if we look here, you can see the motor and a circuit board next to it. You can see adjustment holes marked L and H. Low is 33 and a third RPM, high is 45 RPM, and then this separate adjustment here is for 78 RPM. Now you can stick in your small screwdriver. You'll need to get through a rubber gasket so there will be some resistance. But once you get through that, you'll be able to reach the adjustment trimmer inside the motor. And there's a slot in it to let you adjust it. So you need to twist your screwdriver until you feel it slip into that slot and then you can twist it left or right to adjust the speed. Now if you want to slow it down you twist it left or counterclockwise or to speed it up you twist it right or clockwise. Now most of these seem to come from the factory playing slightly fast on all three speeds. I don't know why but that's the way it is with many of these record players. So what you do is you stick it in, you find that slot, and then you twist it slightly to the left, about this much. See how much I'm moving it? That should be enough to get it lowered to exactly the right speed. For this one it may help to have a little Phillips screwdriver, but you won't need to worry about this unless you're playing 78s. For 78 RPM the adjustment works in the opposite direction. For example, you turn it counterclockwise to speed up the turntable and turn it clockwise to slow it down. And that's it. Hardest part is releasing this clip. Now you can put your turntable back in place. You just drop it down about that far like that and then you can reach in and flip that clip back horizontal. Now I just got to reach back in with it partially reinstalled and flip that clip. There we go. Don't know if I caught that on camera but I flipped it horizontal again. Before we fully reinstall the turntable we can take a look inside the cassette player mechanism. There's four screws on the four corners you need to remove. Now you need to have this popped up because otherwise it'll hit. And then you pull up. You gotta kind of tilt it like that. And then you can pull it out. And then you have full access to your cassette player mechanism. There's the same kind of speed trimmer for the cassette motor. So if you find it's playing slightly fast or slightly too slow, you can make the same kind of adjustment on it. Or if you ever need to replace the belts, they look fairly easy to get to. There's only two belts. It has a plastic flywheel, so it's not exactly high quality. Now you just gotta angle it the same way to get back in like that. And that pops back into place. Now you can reinstall the turntable all the way. This side you can hook under and then it just basically drops into place and you can feel it resting on its springs. 
It is possible to remove the back cover, although there is really no reason to because access to the turntable and cassette belts and speed adjustments is done through the top. But if we peek inside, you can see the heat sink on the amplifier and it has a pretty decent sized power transformer. And if that looks like a standard power connector and SATA cable on the CD drive, that's because it is. It really is just a standard CD burner drive that you would put in your computer. It has the same kind of connections on it. One thing I discovered is that there is actually a knockoff of these TX systems from Encore Technology. They call it the 7-in-1 CD Recording Home System. And it looks very similar, but it's not an exact copy. For example, the controls and display are different, and the cassette player is just a slot-loading, cheapo car mechanism stuck on the side, like you see on those very cheap all-in-one systems. And on the other side is a second CD player, allowing you to make CD-to-CD -CD copies, which is rather unusual but I don't think the quality of this system is anywhere near as good as the TX systems. Mm -hmm.